tous et à toutes et bienvenue sur Marlex in Game. On se retrouve pour du Throne Breaker et on continue cette magnifique histoire en se gelant les cocognettes, bien sûr. Enfin, toujours pareil. Bon, je vais regarder la map un peu pour voir où on en est. Alors, voilà, donc on va monter là. Je vais, faire, je vais payer des éclaireurs pour voir un peu ce qu'il y a. Ouais, voilà, point d'intérêt, point d'intérêt récupérer si euh, donc on va faire le tour comme ça là partir par là voilà et après c'est la quête dans les mines allez on monte qu'y a-t-il ici alors marraine ce bâtiment abrite la banque du clan zegrin le banquier affirme que nous plaçons de l'argent maintenant nous triplerons notre investissement en quelques mois cela semble trop beau pour être vrai, doit-on investir Des gains possibles sont trop importants pour refuser d'investir une somme. Forte somme. Ouais, allez, voilà, 500, c'est bon, c'est fait. On verra euh, plus tard. Alors, voilà, ouais. Bon, j'ai la carte. Oh, un casse-tête à faire. y retourner ici non, non comment ça se passe je sais pas comment ça va se passer du coup on verra well that's yet more settlers in the ground ah ah riding past a mine meave noticed a group of miners gathered around the entrance to a shaft frost had settled on their moustaches and beards suggesting they had been there for some time the queen summoned gabor and asked him to determine the reason for this sit-in He returned after a few minutes and announced the most curious thing. They're waiting for the knocking to stop. Neve's ah, frown prompted Gabor to explain in greater detail. According to our laws, dwarves can't go into a mine if there's knocking coming from inside. We're obliged to wait for the ruckus to quiet down. Ah, yes. Our own miners share this superstition, Reynard interjected. They say the knocking is that of a treasurer gnome, a kind of mine ghost. With all due respect, your miners are dimwits, Gabor said, patting Reynard on the shoulder. Knocking means an imminent and abrupt discharge of the potential pliable energy of rock formations. In other words, you can, a rock burst. Except usually it's all done in a day or two, whereas these lads have been waiting going on two weeks. Foreman's grown impatient. He'd like to send someone down the shaft, have him see what's at issue, but, well... Le code forbids us from doing anything of the sort. Uh -huh. Donc ils sont bloqués. Allez. If in this manner I can gain favor among your brethren, sighed the queen, dismounting. So be it. I shall descend and see what the problem is. The shaft was too narrow to fit an entire army. So Meave and a small unit of men entered the mine, miners' lamps in hand and hearts in their mouths. The rhythmic knocking coming from the bowels of the mountains, distorted and multiplied, was unnerving. Un concert de gnome. Soon the company arrived at the place that seemed the source of the knocking. Gabor put his ear to the rock and listened for several moments in silence, then struck the wall with all his might. Ah. The wall crumbled with a crash, opening a passage into another corridor, from which sprang numerous foes. Et ben allez, c'est parti, hein. Euh, même pas 3 minutes de vidéo et. On est en pleine bataille. Dans les ténèbres de la mine abandonnée. Il était impossible de distinguer qui affrontait les troupes de mer. La seule chose sûre était qu'il s'agissait d'hommes. Ou au moins de choses ayant leur apparence et imitant leur voix. Sachant son épée trop longue pour frapper dans cette galère étroite. Mais voilà, je jeta par terre et dégaine à ce gars. Ça dague. Ça va, tu m'étonnes. Pareil, une épée longue, quand même. L'épée longue. Oh les grottes. Comment veux-tu réussir à taper Alors, une bataille est courte. Euh, sachant que j'ai refait des changements sur mes cartes. On va aller sachant bien. Lui, il est là. Euh. Place. Il commence. On voit pas son silhouette. Ah, 
Une copie du base d'unité au début de chaque tour C'est la force de la présente unité Drop your weapons. Celle de l'unité adjacente Disposant dans la force la unité adjacente Détruisez le... Ok, j'ai rien compris Alors Je vais mettre cette unité On va voir De toute façon, il va heal Ok Watch your heads! <laughs> Deux brûle tout. Et en plus de ça. One bolt on Who just grabbed me? Oh, apologies, Maeve. I thought you were raining. <laughs> oh putain, il me faut rire encore. Ça. Alors. Peut-être falloir attendre. Nice cars. Non. They don't hurt. We'll catch them all. Si la force de la présente unité descend à quatre au moins, mélangez-la dans votre. Le chien c'est John. Ah bam, pédé le goût de celui-là, hein. Non, d'une pipe en bois. Voilà. J'aurais dû faire autre chose. Si je l'ai. Mais des trucs aucune carte en fait. Reynard, are we winning? I can't see a bloody thing. You sure about that? 15 points j'inflige. Bon, bah, je crois que c'est une win. Ouais, je continue. Both sides were surprised. Both fought in the weak light of torches nearly down on hands and knees. In the end, the queen emerged victorious, and as soon as she had returned her sword to its sheath, she asked the new prisoners a question that was on everyone's mind. Who the devils are you? The captives looked at each other in disbelief, as if before them stood a ghost. Finally, one of them managed to choke out a response. Your Highness, we're... We're your subjects. Meave recognized the accent at once. The men came from Rivia. But what were they doing so far from home? According to the prisoner's account, after the Nilfgaardians' invasion of their kingdom, terrible poverty gripped the land. 
seeking bread, some desperate inhabitants had gone to the mountains of Mahakam, engaging in wildcat mining in search of precious ores. Hmm. Without asking the dwarves what they thought of this. You know yourself, my queen, explained one captured Riv. They guard their treasure real jealous-like, don't care a whit about the suffering of others. They see us starving down in valley and don't lift a stubby finger. Sadly, the Rivians had dug close to existing corridors. When Gabor destroyed the wall that stood between them and the dwarves, they were convinced they were being attacked by monsters, so they raised arms in self-defense. Maeve, tis a tough nut to again, said Gabor. But let's nae kid ourselves. These men are thieves, and we must hand them over to the Mahakaman Guard. So they may do what? Sentence them to hard labor, or hang them at once, said Reynard his usual calm shaken and his voice raised. These are your subjects, Queen. They coveted their neighbor's goods, true, but only because they had knelt themselves. Amen. Amen. The foreman wished for the knocking to stop, said the queen, and so it shall. As for you, go back to Rivia, and tell all their queen shall soon return, leading an army. The grateful Rivs quickly packed up their tools and left the mountains. Meave had no doubt Bruva Hoog would soon learn of the affair and would certainly not approve of her decision. Yet she preferred to face the Elder's wrath than send her subjects to a dwarven oh, prison, oh, or possibly to their death. Well, boys, a wee swig and we get back to work. <laughs> well, boys, a wee swig and we get back bon, to work. Bon, c'est chaud quand même. Ben, on verra euh, ce qui va se passer. Du coup, pour moi. Hein. Ah. The sound of approaching hoofbeats made Meave turn to see Reynard spurring on his panting horse, galloping at a breakneck speed towards her. Ill tidings, I bring your grace. Clearly. Glad tidings never arrive with such urgency. Our scouts captured a Nilfgaardian messenger. He was traveling in disguise and by night. When he realized his capture was imminent, he strove to destroy the letters he carried. We were able to salvage some in parts. Anything of interest? Yes, there is, I fear. Your Majesty, you must listen. Consider your offer accepted. Direct Meave and her force to the agreed site. We await their arrival. Your reward shall be as agreed. Hey, A traitor. We might have expected as much. Nilfgaard has shown amply that it abides only by the rules it sets. Nicole. I suppose the scroll bears no name. It does not, Your Grace. The messenger. Have you questioned him? Naturally, Your Grace. Alas, he knows not to whom the letter is directed. He was to leave it in an agreed spot. I take uh, it tidings of the whole affair have spread throughout the force? Yes, Your Majesty. The witnesses were too many to keep this fact a secret. We must thus assume the traitor in our ranks knows it as well, and will make no attempt to retrieve the scroll. A dead end. Merde. Have we any other leads or clues? <sighs> None I fear, Your Majesty. We must be alert. Keep a keen eye on events as they unfold, and exercise great caution in forging new acquaintances. Very well. Eyes wide open, all senses attuned. Yours in particular, Reynard. Of course, my liege. Hmm. Va falloir faire gaffe. On va se prendre quelque chose sur le coin de la gueule encore. Ah putain, c'est bien des. Le moral est bien descendu. Et chier, il faut que je leur donne une bonne petite pinte. Ah non, là, je vais pouvoir l'augmenter. Nickel. Alors, votre maje majesté. Allez, moi trois, c'est pas grave. Alors, bière contaminée. Cette carte est désormais complète. Faudrait que je regarde tout à l'heure à quoi sert tel. Oh, 
on peut pas passer par là. Ah, y a quoi Il ouais, n'y a pas grand chose et puis euh, je peux pas perdre. Euh... Ah, c'est pas possible. Ah, dommage, le butin là-bas. Bon, c'est pas grave. Il bon, y a peut-être quelque chose, mais malheureusement, je peux pas perdre de morale. Donc je ne peux pas le faire. Donc là, au niveau de la carte, parce qu'il y a des trucs qui sont rajoutés, il faut que j'aille chercher ça, ça. Et on va faire le casse-tête. Bon, après avoir fait euh, cette, euh, ce petit puzzle, on continue notre histoire. Donc là, je crois que c'est la quête principale. Hein, je crois qu'il va y avoir du combat ici. Hein. Meave's force near Davos Abyss. Signs of beastly feasting were not hard to find. Countless paw and claw tracks were impressed in the bloodstained snow. Among the boulders, bones picked clean were strewn about. Gascon lifted one from the ground. Empty inside, he said. Something sucked out the marrow. Meave's soldiers feigned indifference to the grisly sight. They marched on, their stepped rhythm unwavering, a song on their lips. Yet hearing a slight tremolo in their voices, Meave knew they merely sought to drown out their fear. A moment later, a commander's horn sounded, the signal to halt. The queen galloped to the fore of the column and found herself at the edge of a vast, round hole in the ground. She could not see the bottom. Me drew her reins tight to prevent her mount from taking even one step forward. What is this? A crater? A desiccated lake? A mine of the strip variety, Gabor explained. Treasures we picked and shoveled for here. Diamonds. Till we happened on the beasts, that is. What now? Orion's a dam. Holds back a lake. If we can break it, water'll rush in. Fill the abyss and the tunnels from which the beasts emerge. Just need to get around the mine first. Way down's on the other side. Meave squinted and gazed into the distance. Indeed, there was the dam. And at its foot, a swarm of beasts roiled about. Her soldiers gazed at their queen expectantly, their arms at the ready. She knew well they would rush into battle, in spite of their fear. Allez. Gabor! Meave cried out over the whirling wind. Have you bards here in Mahakam? Course, Your Grace! Then we shall give them good reason to compose this day on the themes of courage, of heroism, of Lyria! Giop! And with that cry, the Queen spurred her mount, grabbed a banner, and raising it high over her head, rushed headlong at the horrid swarm. Gagnez 7 utilisations de votre vieille catapulte sans qu'elle soit détruite. Waouh, maintenant on va commencer à tous les côtés. Ok, bon, ça va être assez spécial comme truc, la fosse de d'abord. Mm -hmm. We need to break through and destroy the dam. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady.
Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? Your Grace, monsters approach from all sides. I've hit the white of an eye from half a league away. Army's a waste of time for one like me. Done in a jiffy. Voilà. 15 et au moins il est renforcé. Excellent! The dam's about to give! The coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. I'll relieve you of that pouch! And indeed, Bard sang of this battle soon after. For no claws or fangs could break through the wall of shields the Lyrians raised that day. And no scales could protect the beasts from the Lyrian stinging arrows and blades. Fight! Do not relent! Let us show these beasts! It is they who should fear us! The Queen shouted. In the end, the beasts turned to flee. Yet Meave's force cut off any chance of escape. A solid wall of men began to push the monsters ever closer to the edge of Davos' abyss. Pressed from all sides, the horrors began slipping over the precipice, screeching terribly as they fell. Silence came at last. The queen stood at the edge of the precipice, breathing heavily, leaning on her sword. From the depths of the mine came muted growls and groans. Let's flood the damn hole, hissed Gabor, before any other shite crawls out of it. A rush of icy water suddenly rose, then just as abruptly plunged into the mine, flooding the pit. And where once lay Davor's abyss, now lay Davor's pond. Meave descended back into the pass, exhausted and covered in beastly blood, yet also exceedingly pleased. She was one step closer to Dwarven support in the war against Nilfgaard. Once the Lyrians had put some distance between themselves and the now destroyed monster lair, Meave ordered her men to pitch camp. Then she sent the quartermaster off for food and drink. The soldiers lit campfires, then set aside their weapons. Soon after, lively music and song could be heard throughout the camp. Your Majesty, Reynard said from behind Meave's back. A messenger from the Elder-in-Chief. The Queen turned to see a dwarf in a richly adorned jerkin and a shako with golden seams. 
She stifled her laugh into a smile and lifted her chin proudly, expecting praise and a pledge of aid in the war against Nilfgaard. My lady, your daring deeds have come to the Elder's attention, said the dwarf in a measured voice. He's positively irate and demands an explanation. Irate? But why? I and my men, we've aided you greatly. Elder Hoog awaits at the Long Bridge. You'd be ways not to keep him there any length of time. And with that, all the Queen's enthusiasm for a celebration was instantly gone. She waited until the fires expired and the songs died down, then gave the order to march. Bon, je pense qu'on va s'arrêter là pour cet épisode. Donc, euh, merci d'avoir regardé cette vidéo. N'oubliez pas de mettre un j'aime et de vous abonner, bien sûr, pour continuer à regarder du Thronebreaker et ce magnifique scénario. Ah, et on va ouvrir un coffre. Yeah, bon allez. On se dit à la prochaine. Bye bye.